Hi everyone, a question I have recently been asked is why did Jesus need to die? I mean, couldn't God just forgive us without sending his son to die? What does the Bible mean when it says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins? Is our God an angry, bloodthirsty God who will forgive us and give us eternal life only after seeing blood? Absolutely not. There is nothing further from the truth than this. The Bible says that it was God who so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son into the world. It's not that the coming of Christ made God love us. Not at all. Christ came because God loved us. So why did Jesus need to die then? I believe Jesus himself gives us the answer in one of his conversations with the Pharisees. Are you ready for it? Here it is. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds a strong man, then indeed he may plunder his house. There you go. This answers our question. I bet you are thinking, how in the world does this answer the question? Well, let's unpack it a little. You see, contextually, the Pharisees had just accused Jesus of casting out devils by the power of Satan. So Jesus tells them, listen, how can Satan cast out Satan? If a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds a strong man, then indeed he may plunder his house. So Jesus was saying, Satan is a strong man. And for someone to take Satan's goods, he has to first enter into Satan's house, bind him up, meaning be stronger than him, and then he can take his goods. Now in the gospel story, Jesus is the stronger man who enters into the strong man's house or Satan's house. We as humanity are Satan's goods or captives. The question is, what is Satan's house? I hear you say planet earth. Well, yes, that is correct, but that is not exactly what I had in mind. You see, Satan's house or Satan's domain is humanity separated from God. Because of Adam's choice in the Garden of Eden, sin entered into the world and caused a separation between God and man. So Satan's domain is humanity under the full impact of sin or under the curse of the law, meaning humanity separated from God. So for Christ to save us, he had to enter Satan's house, meaning he had to be made sin or be made a curse. All this terminology simply means Christ had to be fully separated from God. And while separated from God, he had to bind Satan or he had to be stronger than Satan, meaning he had to overcome sin or choose to remain loyal to God. By doing that, he condemned sin in the flesh. Jesus defeated sin and Satan while he was separated from God. In other words, Jesus went in to where humanity should have been after Adam's sin. And while in that position, as the second Adam, as the second father and representative of the human race, he chose God. He defeated Satan by not letting sin have power over him. Hence, unlike the first Adam, Jesus, the second Adam, became a possessor of a life in which the power of sin has been broken. Death has been defeated. A life that is united with God and free from the curse of the law. You see, in order to achieve all this and to alter such a human life, Jesus needed to come under the curse of sin, meaning he needed to be separated from God. And as a consequence of his separation from God, Jesus died. Jesus did not die to appease an angry God, neither did he die because God demanded blood or red liquid, not at all. Jesus' death has a much deeper and greater meaning. His death was not a punishment. It was a consequence of what he really needed to do in order to author a life that is free from sin and the curse of the law, a life that is fully united with God and then offer this life to us. So what does this mean to you and me today? Paul answers our question by saying that Jesus was made a curse so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. In other words, Jesus went into the kingdom and domain of Satan, broke his hold, and came out to offer his very own life to whoever receives him by faith. 
a life that is free from sin and the curse of the law, a life that is fully united with God. Just like we came into the world with the life of the first Adam, a life under the curse of sin, because of what Jesus did, we can be born again with the life of the second Adam, a life that is free from the curse of sin. So praise God for Jesus. Hallelujah for what He has done. This life that is free from sin, this life in which the power of sin and the curse of sin is broken, can be yours by you simply believing, having faith in Christ and receiving Him into your life. Jesus said, as I live, so shall ye live also. By Him coming from the dead, by us receiving Him, we receive His life in which the power of sin has been broken. Don't forget to send your questions in and God bless.